Imagine a time when for more than five years, one small girl could grip the attention of an entire movie-going world. Could be adored by the high and the mighty, as well as ordinary folk. There has never been anyone quite like this little girl. She was the biggest child star of all time. Her name was Shirley Temple. For four years in a row, from 1935 to 1938, Shirley Temple was the number one box office star in Hollywood. She was even more popular than Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, and Gary Cooper. Because of her films, her studio Fox was saved from bankruptcy. She had this natural charm and this great charisma that came out uh, uh, on the screen. Lost a week, a Donnarelli came at all. Nice, old, a geezer with a lost cough. Cease, my, a Mrs. Sexy stop at all. And a very gentle one you are. Shirley Jane Temple was born on April 23, 1928, in Santa Monica, California. Her mother, Gertrude Temple, who already had two sons, yearned for a daughter, and she set about making her baby special. Her father, George Temple, worked in the Santa Monica Bank, and he indulged his wife's every dream for Shirley. Shirley's early training included music and art appreciation, and watching her mother dance to a tambourine to instill a sense of rhythm in her. Shirley was barely three when Gertrude decided she was ready for the next step. At that time, the Meglin Dance Studio was known to every ambitious parent as an entryway to show business. In 1932, when Shirley was three, directors from Educational Pictures visited Meglin Dance Studio in search of 10 boys and two girls for a series of one reel comedies. Shirley was selected, and she was on her way to stardom. The shorts were called baby burlesques, which is just what they were. Children, little more than toddlers, in diapers and exaggerated safety pins, enacted scenes drawn from adult melodrama. I cannot talk here. He is watching. Come on with me. Even then, Shirley Temple stood out. I played the lead in a series of high school comedies for educational pictures called The Frolics of Youth. Hooray! Happy birthday, son. <laughs> she didn't know how to read yet. So every night after work, I guess while her mother was giving her a bath, she would read her the scenes that were going to be shot the following day. So as a result, when Shirley showed up on the set the next morning, she knew everybody's lines. Now, if any one of us made a mistake, in all sweetness, nothing precocious, she would say, oh no, you're supposed to say, and then she'd tell us what we were supposed to say. And you know, she was never wrong. Stop that, Mary Lou. Stop that, Mary Lou. Shirley really enjoyed uh, being a little actress. Mary Lou, stop that. I never did see her pamper and, and cry on the set like a lot of other little kids did. <laughs> a year later, in 1933, Shirley was ready for her first feature film, To the Last Man. The first time I could ever remember her, I remember her with her mother and uh, 
I was carrying Shirley's suitcase and my dad was carrying Mrs. Temple's suitcase and we were going to our separate little cabins there on location for the making of the movie uh, To the Last Man, which was starring Randolph Scott. And we played a brother and a sister in, in the movie. You gotta give me a kiss first. Now these two sons have suitable. We played together all the time after that on the, on the on location there. We just ran all over the, the place. They had all these animals and horses and little puppies. That was a big deal in the picture where they had these cute little puppies. And she was actually just like a, kind of a little sister to me at the time. During 1933, Shirley had bit parts in seven feature films. One of these was Now I'll Tell, starring Spencer Tracy. Also in the cast was Alice Faye. Because I was in awe of Spencer Tracy. I, I wasn't hardly thinking about anybody else. I mean, Spencer Tracy was just uh, killing me. Imagine me in a picture with Spencer Tracy. And we hadn't heard too much about Shirley Temple, and she sort of came out of the blue. I was sitting with my mom in the office, and about that time, the door opened, and without a doubt, through that door walked the most adorable, the most beautiful, the most precious little girl I'd ever seen in my whole life. And I said, well, even though my heart sank to my toes, I said, well, Lord, I guess it's just not my turn yet, because I know she's it. She's just what that script calls for, because she is really precious. This film, Stand Up and Cheer, introduced five-year-old Shirley Temple to the world. Her part was small, but show business would never be the same again. Audiences and reviewers alike were bowled over by this unheralded little girl who could dance and act up a storm with such disarming ease. In the 30s, the Great Depression gripped the country. Many Americans were suffering out of work and down on their luck. Shirley could make people believe if only for 90 minutes, that uh, there were no problems in the world. You forgot, you know, that there were men selling apples on the street coming to the back door and asking for food and work or work and food or, or anything. And being at a Shirley Temple film was complete getaway. Look at the funny side. It was 1934. Fox Film Corporation signed the five-year-old to a year's contract at $150 a week, then quickly lent her out to Paramount Pictures at a sizable profit. The picture was Little Miss Marker. It was to star Adolf Manjou, who did not like to work with children. I prayed the Lord my soul to take. And make me a good little girl. You don't want to be a little girl. No, no, dear. Make you a good little girl. Make me a good little girl. Is that all? That's the works. But when do I ask for what I want? You better do it right now while your prayer's still hot. Please, God. Buy your story a new suit of clothes. By the end of filming, Manju had become another Shirley Temple devotee. Say no thank you. What for? Well, you used to say thank you and no thank you. I used to be a sissy. Now, where did you get that? Ain't telling. And I don't want no mush. Little Miss Marker was an instant hit. In three weeks, it took in half its original cost at just one New York City theater. Paramount offered Fox $50,000 for Shirley's contract. The offer was refused. Soon, Shirley was acting opposite Hollywood's biggest stars, such as Gary Cooper in the 1934 Now and Forever. I'm sorry, Daddy. What do you mean? Tony told me. Told you what, Penny? That she stole it. Please, Daddy, forgive me. Please. Why, of course. Of course, Tom. Lean down. Shirley's acting ability was more being Shirley um, in a pretend situation than it was actually acting. 
the studios, they had a gold mine in her, and they didn't want her to, to get uh, affected. That's probably the best word I could use is they wanted to keep her isolated. Uh, she couldn't she couldn't go out. She could she had a bowling alley I know that they built for her in her home and a little soda fountain there. Shirley was around adults uh, mainly. I don't think that she had a great many children to play with. There was certainly never any children uh, that we played with on the set. Mrs. Temple just adored Shirley. You could see the love there. Shirley loved what she was doing. She loved to dance. She, 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 she loved everything, and, and you could see it. Shirley Temple had ushered in the era of the child star. In studio after studio, the search was on for new child stars, including Mickey Rooney, Jackie Cooper, and Deanna Durbin, bright, wonderful child actors who were signed up and rushed into picture after picture. But in the early 30s, none would be more luminous than Shirley Temple. The studio had dropped a year from Shirley's age, hoping to magically prolong her childhood and their bonanza. And there you are, happy landing on a chocolate bar. See the sugar bowl, do the tootsie roll with the big bad devil's food cake. If you eat too much, oh, oh, you'll awake with a tummy. On the good ship, lollipop, it's an night trip. Into bed you hop and dream away. She appeared in eight films in just one year, 1934. But her salary remained $150 a week. Product endorsements with Shirley's name and picture brought the studio large sums every year. But Shirley received no part of it. Finally, at her mother Gertrude's insistence, Shirley's salary was raised to $1,000 a week. For her role as tutor and advisor, Gertrude received $250. Shirley's parents would now control her product endorsements. In 1935, Shirley played opposite Lionel Barrymore in the dramatic comedy, The Little Colonel. Who are you? They call me The Little Colonel. What under the sun do they call you that for? Because I'm so much like you. Like me? How are you like me? Because I've got such a temper. And I stamp my foot when I get mad. And I get all red in the face. I don't know who your mother is, but whoever she is, she ought to teach you better. Don't you dare say anything about my mother. In 1935, Shirley Temple received a special award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for what was called her monumental achievement. Thank you very much, Mr. Cobb. Mommy, can I go home now? That same year, Fox merged with Century Studio, and 20th Century Fox came into being. Daryl F. Zanuck became the new studio head. An essential job was to maintain the meteoric rise of one of the new company's major assets, Shirley Temple. Shirley's films continued to work their magic at the box office as Shirley worked hers on the screen. Bon, this is station L-O-V-E. Bon, I'm Cupid's assistant, please listen to me. My I remember when Zanuck to told my agent that I was going to do um, Poor Little Rich Girl. I said, oh, no. Oh, I, I don't want to be with a child. I'm a dramatic actress. But I was told that she was tremendous box office, so I did it. The part wasn't any good, but it was fun being with Shirley. And it was sometimes very embarrassing. I couldn't remember a line. And Shirley was standing there with this sweet face, you know, looking at you and, you know, I love you. You're an idiot, but I love you. The name of this song is Dinah. The name of this song is Dinah. The name of this song is Dinah. It's but definitely. None of us could get over this this little thing that that uh, could remember ten pages of dialogue in a 
just nothing. And here we are struggling along, you know, and she could dance up a storm with Bill Robinson. She could sing with Jimmy Dunn. She could do anything. She was just, just dum, 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 unbelievable. Dum, dum. Yeah. Everybody that came to California, that came to Hollywood and visited the studios, no matter who they were, they all wanted to meet Shirley Temple. The Temples were determined to give Shirley a private life, but the studio was just as determined to feed the public's hunger for every bit of news about Shirley. How Gertrude Temple maintained her famous daughter's curls, where Shirley went on vacation and what she did there. Waikiki Beach, a new lifeguard ready in case any 300-pounder should get into trouble in the surf. In 1936, Shirley completed four films, including Stowaway, where she played Ching Ching opposite Robert Young Hello. and Alice Fay. Oh, the poor little thing, we frightened her. Oh, she's frightened us. What's your name? In Chinese or American. What? In American, it's Barbara Stewart. But in Chinese, it's Ting Ting. We made some pretty nice pictures, and we were always trying to make people happy and, and, and have a nice storyline. So uh, that, that, that's, that was one of the reasons I think she appealed to uh, uh, the public. Say, you get your own In 1937, for the third straight year, Shirley Temple was at the top in box office popularity. At nine years of age, she was still ahead of Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, and Bing Crosby. In spite of some pessimistic forecasts, Shirley's magic remained. Shirley Temple was a tremendous star, as big a star as you'd want. She was a delightful little girl, an extraordinary little girl. I worked with her in Wee Willie Winkie and the Little Princess. Wee Willie Winkie actually was a part of a boy, but they made it into a girl for Shirley. She would do anything that she was told. In Wee Willie Winkie, she had to run across a road when they were having sort of a stampede of horses and Hindus riding around, and she ran right through there, didn't hesitate at all. She had a lot of guts, that little girl. In 1938, MGM's Louis B. Mayer thought he had the perfect project for Shirley Temple. Daryl F. Zanuck refused to loan her out, and so the role went to a little-known MGM contract player named Judy Garland. The picture was The Wizard of Oz. But Zanuck's competitive spirit had been roused, and he made his own plans for Shirley. The Little Princess was Shirley's highest budgeted film to date, and it was her first all-color picture. When we start the blessed donkey shop, he won't move so I quickly ops. Pals start a wagon and when down he drops, someone says he wasn't mine to go. And the Little Princess, the the one thing I do remember about Shirley is that we, we had a scene where she was to dump ashes all over me. They had rehearsed us and rehearsed us and rehearsed us. They also had an extra dress for me and an extra dress for Shirley. They wanted to do it in one take. You don't? Why, you little liar. You haven't even had breakfast. Pardon me, but I really have. And if you'll excuse me for saying so, it isn't polite to call people liars. How dare you talk back to me? Was I doing that? My goodness! Oh, oh, so sorry! Oh, <laughs> you ain't gonna do this picture on you! When they said cut, everybody was screaming, and Shirley just stood there and she looked around and she ran over to the director and she said, Can we do that again? Mrs. Temple urged Zanuck to find stories for Shirley that showed her as a real girl with the problems of a real girl. 
Shirley was growing up, but her roles weren't changing. When at last, the Bluebird gave Shirley the chance to play a girl who wasn't always perfect, audiences were not happy with the change. In 1939, when she was 11 years old, Shirley presented Walt Disney with one small Oscar for each dwarf in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Shirley's popularity was still high. By 1940, the studio had starred her in 19 films in six years. Her pictures had been among its highest grocers. Yet soon, Shirley's contract at 20th Century Fox would be coming to an end. Young People, her last film at 20th Century Fox, yes, I was there. And I remember her being very sweet on the set, a little bit remote because she went to school by herself. The rest of the kids went to school uh, in a schoolroom, and then Shirley had her dressing room where her teacher worked with her. Uh, but she was, very, she was very sweet with all the kids on the set. And I remember I felt a certain respect, and I think the other kids did too, because she was very gentle and very professional, and so it, was, it would be very hard not to like her. Even though Shirley was fifth in the box office ratings, her contract with 20th Century Fox was not renewed. But she was becoming more like other girls her age, the reason? Shortly before she left Fox, a happy Shirley had enrolled in West Lake, a private girls' school in Beverly Hills. It was her first school outside the studio. Shirley was now free to work at any studio. In 1942, she appeared in Miss Annie Rooney. She was 14 years old. The following year, Shirley was signed by David O. Selznick to be one of a group of players contracted to him. The first film Shirley appeared in for Selznick was Since You Went Away. Even though Selznick saw Shirley as the ideal American teenager, he feared audiences were not ready to accept their Shirley in any role that showed her in too sexy a light. But Shirley refused to tone down her youthful looks or clothes. Motion picture critics apparently approved. They voted her as giving the best juvenile performance of the year. America had declared war, and Shirley visited hospitals, army bases, and war plants. She appeared on radio comedy shows and her own radio series, Junior Miss. More and more, she was taking charge of her own life. Shirley had worked well with a goodly number of handsome leading men. Gary Cooper, James Dunn, Joel McRae. It was no surprise when Shirley started dating a handsome Marine sergeant. What was a surprise was when 17-year-old Shirley Temple, the actress no one believed would ever grow up, decided to marry the sergeant. His name was John Agar. The wedding drew thousands of fans and meant instant news and disbelief around the world. Hello, Mr. Nugent. The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer gave Shirley the chance to play a love-smitten teenager. Dickie, hello. The same year, 1947, Shirley made a picture, That Hagen Girl, co-starring a man she would one day work with in other fields, Ronald Reagan. The film gave Shirley a chance to act and not just be cute. Her fans were disappointed with the results. There's your towel, you'll be as fresh as a daisy. Thanks, Ma. But audiences still flocked to see a picture with Shirley Temple, and now her new husband, John Agar. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I thought it was Ma. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Few knew that Shirley's marriage to John Agar was falling apart. They had a daughter, but divorced in 1949. She was just 21. However, Shirley gained custody of her child and restored her name to Shirley Temple. It was a time of endings. In April of that year, Selznick had put his whole company up for sale. Another ending, A Kiss for Corliss, proved to be Shirley Temple's last feature film. 
When the picture was completed, Shirley went on vacation to Hawaii with her daughter and her parents. There, she met Charles Black, a young businessman from San Francisco who seemed unique. He had never seen a film starring America's little darling. Within months, Shirley became Mrs. Charles Black. From time to time, she appeared on television and had her own series, but eventually she turned away from her career as an actress. I really feel that Shirley Temple, by the time she was a grown woman, had had it. Not that she was uh, turning her back on the business. I think she had fulfilled herself. That's my best instinct. I, I think Shirley went on to have another life. By 1967, Shirley Temple, now Shirley Temple Black, was ready to begin a new career in Republican politics. When she entered the political arena, her fame became an asset and gave her the chance to do what she had always done well, relate to people. Shirley Temple doesn't hurt Shirley Temple Black. Shirley Temple helps Shirley Temple Black because Shirley Temple is remembered with love, with affection. Um, I'm thought of as a friend, which I am. Shirley Temple Black's achievements have been many. A long-standing and happy marriage, mother of three children, a grandmother, the first woman to be U.S. Chief of Protocol, special envoy to the United Nations, ambassador to Ghana, ambassador to Czechoslovakia. Shirley Temple died on February 10, 2014, at the age of 85. She would forever be America's little darling. I've lived a good many years, and I've worked with a lot of people, but I've never, ever worked with anybody like her. Shirley's gift to show business to the United States and to the movie-going public was a revelation of the creativity and the sense of joy and fun of childhood that is in each of us. I don't think any child ever did that better than Shirley did.